Okay, so back from the cinema, um, just saw Halloween ends, and boy, howdy did it end. Okay, we're gonna have to set some ground rules first. I've already mentioned this in my previous video. What did I think of the other ones? Halloween 1 is a masterpiece, and I will stand by that. Halloween... I'm just gonna use the modern, ha modern timeline. Halloween 2018 was a good revival. Halloween Kills was okay. Um, it's only probably for fans, and even then it was a bit derivative. But Halloween ends. To talk about this, we're probably going to have to talk about the previous endings. Because there's a lot of timelines in the Halloween franchise, believe me. Now let's take a look at where all of them have left off. Um, the original timeline, Halloween 6, was an awful finale. Halloween Resurrection, in the timeline after that, was an awful finale. Halloween 2, in the Rob Zombie timeline, was an awful finale. And this one, I can't say is a good film, but it was a good footnote, and I'll explain. But the plot, okay, so the plot. Spoilers, by the way. Sorry, I accidentally just knocked the camera off. Spoilers, by the way. Um, so, after the events of Halloween Kills, where she gets up and fucks everyone up, uh, and then he goes away into the sewer, apparently. Uh, a year after that, we meet this babysitter. I'm going to call him Mickey. You're going to see why. Um, I don't remember his real name, he's that bland. Uh, well, no, he's not that awful, but they were building up a lot with his character that they didn't follow through with. We'll get to that later. Um, so he's babysitting this kid who's an absolute arsehole, by the way. Um, and everyone's been paranoid of Michael Myers ever since the 2018 murders, so I can't exactly say I blame them, like he killed half the town. Um, so this little arsehole of a kid looks the grown adult babysitter into the room some dark room, it says the boogeyman's gonna get you, and makes him real paranoid, and this is on a balcony, like, three stories up, I'd like to say, rich family, um, and the guy's kicking down the door, and he kicks it down, but the kid's in the way, right as the parents get home, the kid falls on the balcony, um, he had a knife in his hand, because the kid was uh, making, like, screaming noises, and the knife disappeared, and he was just luring the adult up into the room, to uh, stuff with him, basically, so no, he gets convicted of manslaughter. He doesn't get convicted, but he committed manslaughter. Um, he gets off. It's not his fault, but some jerks keep buggering around with him. But before that, there's uh, Laurie Strode and Allison Strode. Still, I don't think struggling is the right word, but Jamie's bought a... Not, why am I saying Jamie? Laurie's bought a house. Um... Laurie's bought a house, she's living with Allison as well, um, having a good life, uh, still struggling, considering, you know, both parents are dead for Allison and daughter's dead for Laurie, um, no, nah, they, the babysitter and Allison kind of have a bit of a fling, uh, that will go places, I'll tell you about that, but, um, so now that happens, um, hold on one sec, god, I'm awful at this whole film thing, um, Oh well, hopefully one day I'll stop using an iPad and get a proper camera. Year 10 will decide that. Well, I'm in year 10, year 11 will. Um, so no, they've been living together, trying to get over everything. Uh, the evil, not evil, um, manslaughter babysitter, Mickey, and Allison kind of get along. Uh, they meet when some bullies, um, that recognize Mickey and smashes chalky milk, I mean, absolute sinners, um, and it's glass for some reason, I thought it would be a carton, and it smashes up his hand, and, um, Laurie pulls up with a pocket knife, looks at him and says, should I do it, or should you do it, something along those lines, unless like slashes tires, it's the greatest thing ever, um, so he gets sent to the hospital, which is where Allison works as a nurse, or a doctor, I'm pretty sure it's a nurse, though, she seems to be the caro, not the medical professional, um, so... Yeah, he gets sent there, his hand gets stuffed up, and the bully's really unhappy with the slashing, so later, um, he's just walking along the side of the road. After a party he goes to with, uh, Allison, which doesn't end well, uh, the mother of the person he accidentally killed is there and yelling at him. He didn't do anything, it's not his fault. Well, he did do something, but that's not his fault. It's manslaughter. It was accidental. Um, and the bullies end up stuffing him up, and they knock him over a bridge, where there's a homeless man, uh, watching, and he gets, m Mickey gets pulled away into the sewers. He wakes up, and Michael Meyer grabs his throat. He's just been hiding in a wall for four years, apparently. And he stares him deep into his eyes. 
but he lets him go. He sees that he's killed someone, and he's growing the blackest eyes, and he lets him go. So, that was fascinating. And then the man walks away. Um, and Mickey walks away, but the homeless man is like, nope, you have to go back in there. Um, that can't be happening, because you need to feed Michael's thirst, something along those lines. If he doesn't kill you, he's going to kill me. Uh, pulls a pocket knife out on him. Um, Mickey ends up reversing it and stabbing the homeless man and his taste for death is growing. Um, Allison uh, is being probably pretty pervertedly, pervertedly hit on by some cop. Uh, Mickey finds out, ends up lowering said cop into the sewers where he f- fights him, uh, gets a few licks in, and then Michael comes up and they tag team him. Um, Michael's in bad shape, but... um. He ends up killing the cop, and as established in the next movie, he gets stronger because of it. Um, Mickey gets this scarecrow mask, which is what he was wearing at the party, so on and so forth. Uh, they end up killing more people, like the arsehole doctor who didn't give Allison a promotion because he was sleeping with the other nurse. Um, Mickey ends up killing the doctor, and then the nurse runs straight into Michael, who uh, Michael kills. So all that's going on. And fast forward a bit, um, is, um, Laurie's not a fan of Mickey for very obvious reasons. She understands probably going down a dark path and Allison's like, no, you don't understand him. So on and so forth. We're both tormented. It's like twilight levels of crap, but I think that's kind of the point, the whole, not quite manipulation, but struggling souls. Uh, sorry about the, uh, scenery change, had to get moved. That's alright. Um, so yeah, Laurie's not a fan, they're tortured, all that, um, so Michael and Mickey have this weird, I'm not gonna say bond, they're both kind of monsters, but understanding of each other, since mm, technically Mickey's the one who helps Michael get back in shape, but all of that is thrown aside, um, the kids in the junk, who, um, the kids who, were um, bullying Mickey, uh, come back, because he wrote, um, Psycho on their car, which is what they kept calling him. Um, I'm probably missing a few steps, but this film's fresh, it'll settle soon. Um, miss if, yeah, I'm probably missing a few steps. Um, and he ends up having a tussle with Michael, and he says, you have something I need, and Michael's just standing there like, hey homie, what's up? And then he starts tackling Michael, he's like, oh no, not cool. Um, Michael starts beating the shit out of him, but, um, Mickey gets the upper hand and steals Michael's mask. I have no idea where he gets the jumpsuit, though, because he gets a Michael Myers-like jumpsuit, but I don't know where he gets it. Probably not that hard to come around, considering he is a mechanic. It's because he's a mechanic, I'm a fucking idiot. No, it's because he's a mechanic. Um, and then the cycles, they know where he works, they go to the junk shop, because he's a mechanic. Um, and Mickey's there with the Michael Myers mask. He ends up killing this other radio DJ who was pissing him and Allison off. Uh, it's a really funny scene where I wasn't really satisfied with the gore until the scene where, like, they slash this guy's mouth open and he uses a pair of scissors to cut his tongue off and it lands on the record and it keeps disturbing it and making it skip and it's the funniest thing ever and it shouldn't be, but probably that's just my dark taste in humour. Uh, someone's just listening to, listening to the radio. Allison's listening to the radio, not knowing her boyfriend's responsible for the uh, hiccup and it's hilarious. I apologize for the vacuum, there's just some vacuuming going on. So, now all that's happening, he starts killing all the junkyard kids, uh, the bullies, one by one. He gets a car, he runs over one of them, he stabs one of them in the eye. Um, his dad also rocks at the junkyard, and he sees his son, and it's like, no, don't shoot. Um, he gives one of the bullies a gun, because he's like, Michael's after me, he doesn't know it's his son. And it's a rifle, not a shotgun, as I said when I was watching it, because it leaves a clean hole, not a bunch of little pallets. Um, and he gets in front of his son, and the guy accidentally shoots the dad. And there's a really good shot where the dad, um, gets, um, the dad is in front of Mickey, and he covers up Mickey entirely, and when he gets shot and falls over, Mickey's gone. Like, how would he disappear? He would have, like, had to crawl away out of scene. Great shot, I really like that. Speaking of which, there was a scene where he was at the, um, radio place, or the, I think I called it the diner, I'm an idiot, of uh, the guy's tongue who got, he cut off. Um, <sighs> great scene to see how he's devolving as a human. Um, he falls off the roof, and he does the Michael Myers, like, get up, 
where he just stands completely straight. It's not perfect. It's not like how Michael does it. I'd say it's more comparable to how it is in Halloween H2O, even though that's not technically Michael, but that's whatever. Um, so yeah, he kills him. He runs some poor sap over with a car. Um, that's stuck in a fence. I don't think we know what happens to her right now. She gets slashed, and the main bully gets a blowtorch in the mouth, which we don't see. Well, we do, but we don't. It's, like, faded out. But honestly, it probably wouldn't have looked like that great of an effect anyway, so we get the general idea across. And he's going to kill... So Mickey goes over to kill, um, Laurie. And Laurie's not having any of it. Um, Mickey told Allison, let's leave Hanfield. And they had a fight, Allison and Laurie, and she's going to kill herself. And then Mickey walks in, and she, I think she doesn't know it's Mickey. She might think it's Michael. But either way, she's not really surprised. She goes to point a gun at her head. She calls the police. She's like, I'd like to report a suicide. And she walks downstairs, sees Mickey, and thinks, you don't think I'm that stupid, do you? And shoots him twice, fires off the rest of his rounds, the rest of her rounds, to say, I'm not fucking around. And she's like, if you want to kill me, do it. And he's like, no one can have Allison except me. And he stabs himself in the throat. He's not dead yet. Um, and it looks like she's dead. And she pulls the knife trying to fix him. Which you probably shouldn't take it out. Anyway, she's not a medical professional. It's fine. Um, and then Allison walks in right as this happens. And it looks like Jamie's... Not Jamie, Laurie. Looks like Laurie's killed her. So she runs off crying. Um, and then the actual Michael shows up. Kills Mickey. Goddamn. Um, takes the mask back, and here's where the big fight happens. Um, Laurie gets a few good licks in, microwave explosion, kicks the door into Michael's face, um, have a knife fight, um, they, I think either Michael, uh, Laurie, or both get their hands down the, um, I like to call it a, it's not a garbage disposal, it's an American thing, so I wouldn't know what it is, it's like a sink that has like a blender in it to crash, crush stuff up and make it more easy to go through the pipes. And that was a bit gnarly. And I have a fight. And she n stuffs him up real good, knocks him onto the table, pins him down with many knives, um, stabs him in the chest, pins him down with more knives, stabs him in the gut. Um, and then Allison comes back later in a s second. Michael, like, rips his hand out of the knife and it's, like, split into, like, in um, Friday the 13th Part 4 when Jason gets the machete through his hands, except... It doesn't last as long. Um, no, he's pinned down. They take Michael's mask off. We see what the side of his face looks like. We don't see his whole face, and that's fine. We've seen it in the first one, and it's, who cares? It's just a man. He kind of looks like Darth Vader. Uh, it's, but at the side, he has a few loose hairs. Um, and I think she puts the knife down. Something along the lines of we might die together. I don't remember a whole lot. I was more just adrenaline. I'm like, yeah, this is great. And then Allison comes. Um, and she's like, not like this. And they slit Michael's throat. And they slit his wrists open. And he's still breathing, kind of. And then they tie him to the trunk. Well, not the trunk. The top hood of a car when the police arrive. They're like, the people have to know that he's truly dead. Because a lot of what happened is technically because of the fear of Michael Myers. Like, ever since the 2018 killings, things are getting more paranoid. That's what caused Mickey to kick down the door in fear and kill the little kid. Which put him on his path of murder. Um... And a few people killed themselves because of it, and they're all afraid. All of this is still because of Maya's grip on terror, which they touch on at the end of Kills. What it does to the people. And they all follow him into the junk... Follow the car into the junkyard, where they toss him into, like, an industrial grinder. And he gets shredded. He's dead. No tombstone, no anything. Michael Myers is dead. The shape is dead. Halloween is dead. Uh, one of the cops and Laurie, who they were in the hospital together in Kills, have a nice chat... Uh, I don't think we find out what happens to Allison. For some reason, Laurie keeps the mask. Don't Fear the Reaper starts playing, which I thought was a funny homage to the first one and just the series in general. Um, and yeah, Michael's dead. So, what are my problems and what are my compliments? Let's start with the good stuff, because there is a lot. I was very disappointed in the gore to start off with. A lot of off-screen death. I, a few things I haven't touched on. Um, Mickey kills his, uh, a few homeless men, um, a few other people. Kills his mother, who's abusive and kind of incesty. I am not sure. Like, she slaps him in the face, and she's like, oh, I'm sorry. And then kisses him straight on the lips, which I don't know if it's just a weird mother thing, or a something else thing. This video's probably gonna get flagged. I don't fucking care. 
eat at YouTube. Um, no, so that happens. Um, the goal was pretty average up until the tongue scene, which every Halloween movie has its moments. Like, the first one's not that bloody. Um, but, like, the Bob Pinsel the Wall moment would be a good one. Halloween 2 would be... What would I think of? Him being set on fire would be a good one. The bathtub scene, or the hot bath scene where he burns the face off. Halloween 3 would probably be the kid dying through the snakes. Halloween 4 would probably be the thumb to the brain or the throat getting ripped out. Halloween 5, that film's shit, I don't care. Halloween 6 would be the head explosion. Halloween H2O would probably be, be Michael himself having his head cut off. Or maybe that shit getting strung up with the electrical cords. Halloween Resurrection, again, I don't care. Halloween... 2007, um, oh, that's a good question, lots of just regular stabbing, um, the guy he gets his mechanic clothes from I thought was pretty good, he just keeps slamming him into a wall, Halloween 2, again, probably Michael as well, um, Halloween 2018, the jack-o'-lantern head, Halloween kills, I don't know, um, probably again Michael before he got up, um, probably the mob scene at the end, and this one would definitely be the, um, DJ who gets his tongue cut off, so the gore is really good with that, like, I'd assume all practical. Um, that was great. Um, now, my big... And I mean, my big problem with the film, which I'm not even sure is a problem, it's hard to describe. We all know that this series is eventually going to get rebooted again. It will. It always has been. And this is a good footnote as the end of the series, but it's going to get rebooted again. Now, I don't want that to happen. I actually want this to be the last one. So, that comes off, you know, it's serious. There's a few things that could have happened. They were building up mm, Mickey becoming the new boogeyman of Haddonfield. And saying that, J Jamie Lee Curtis saying that this is going to be her last film appearance as Laurie Strode gave me the feeling that they were both Michael and Laurie going to die together. That is not true. Michael just dies. So, um... I thought what was going to happen is that Michael was going to die, Laurie was going to die, Allison was going to become the new hero, and Mickey was going to become the new boogeyman, the scarecrow, whatever you want to call him, because he has, like, the scarecrow mask. Would have added an interesting relationship as somewhat lovers that were driven apart. Um, he doesn't talk a lot when he puts on the Michael Myers mask up until the um, end when he basically says, fuck you, to Laurie. Um... So, my problem stems from the fact that I want Michael Myers dead. For good. No ghosts, no uh, what the original Halloween 4 was going to be, Ghost Michael Myers. That was dumb. Not gonna lie, John Carpenter. It was better than the script you, that was given to the film, but it was dumb. The film shouldn't have happened in the first place. Um, so, I wanted Michael Myers dead. And I knew, I know they're gonna continue the franchise somehow. So, I wanted, if they were gonna do it, I wanted him dead. So, I didn't want any of this to actually happen, but if they were going to continue the Halloween series, I wanted it to keep the same continuity with Michael dead and Mickey as the new killer. But Mickey died. They were building up the whole idea of killing people takes your soul away and makes you stronger. And I guess that could kind of work, because... Mickey survives a knife to the throat, which I know won't kill someone instantly, but he got a little strong. He did some weird supernatural stuff, like disappearing behind his dad. But they don't go anywhere with it. And I know they're going to reboot the series again. And as a standalone film to end this continuity string, this timeline, good. But if they're going to continue the series, I wish they kept Mickey alive. And I don't want any of it to happen. It's See what I mean? It's a rock and a hard place. In an ideal world, the series stops. In my compromised world, the series keeps going with this continuity. Michael's dead, Mickey's new killer, Allison new hero, Laurie Strode's dead. What's probably going to happen is they're just going to ignore the sequels and start fresh again. So that's where my issue lies. But no, as an actual send-off, it was good. Again, the cuts. I'm sorry about that. It's all good. Um, I should probably mention, watching the film was an interesting experience. I had a mate with me. I'm just gonna call... Hmm. I don't know, he's just a mate. Um, 
No, he was... Yeah, that was... It was fun to watch it with someone. Um, there weren't many people in the theatre. I feel like the film's going to get a lot of people in the theatre on actual Halloween itself. Even in Australia, Halloween isn't as big. It's getting there, and I'm glad to hear that. So, no, there was only me and him, and there were a few others, but they were more interested in playing tonsil hockey with each other. Uh, so we kind of turned the film into a comedy, and we shouldn't have done that, because when I told him to be quiet, and sometimes he did, um, <laughs> the scene where um, we were t watching the um, uh, DJ, disc jockey, radio man, uh, but like, yo, this is kind of a podcast studio. Imagine if Michael Myers was on Joe Rogan, and he's like, all you hear is heavy breathing, and then Joe Rogan just like 50 minutes in, of complete silence says, so, you ever tried weed? And then you just hear Michael, like, hear a mask being taken off. <laughs> Fuck yeah. So that was funny. Uh, that's a natural response, though, when you're afraid to find something to laugh about. When you're afraid and you know you're not in danger, let me rephrase that. Um... No, it was good. Film was good. As a film, I don't feel like... I feel like it didn't work. It had all these ideas, again, of Mickey as a new killer that builds up and just does nothing with. Kind of like Halloween Kills. Which I own physically now, by the way, and you bet your bottom dollar that I'm buying Halloween Ends physically when it comes out. Not Blu-ray, I hate Blu-rays, DVD. Um, no. Um, would I say it's better than Halloween Kills? Yes, definitely. Halloween Kills was a mess. I liked it, but it was a mess. Um, this one has ideas that it didn't do anything with, kind of like Halloween Kills, but it was a good send-off, um, good send-off to the actors, to Michael himself, who's dead, there's no way he's not dead, unless they pull the zombie route, which I hope they don't, the only slasher that I can ever accept being a zombie would be Jason Voorhees, because he's been a zombie just as long as he hasn't been, so that's just a cemented fact. Um, no, that wouldn't fit the shape to him to come back to life like that. No, it was good. Not a great film. A good send-off and a good footnote, footnote, though. And it was fun, you know? Some films are bad, but they're fun. Like, I don't think Bioshock Infinite's a good game, by any chance. Well, the shooting's alright. The plot's BS, but I still like that game. It's fun. It was one of those films where... I don't know, don't go watch it with your date, because, just don't, it's not worth that, but, um, no, it was better than Kills, not as good, but more unique than Halloween 2018, and, again, still doesn't hold a candlelight to the original, that is a masterpiece, but no, let me know what you guys thought about the film, if you've seen it, uh, do you think it was better than Kills, do you think it was worse, do you think it was better than 2018, do, or, do you also think that certain ideas fell flat, feel free to let me know.